read from Leviticus 8 to Leviticus 31 or 28 or is it 27? Oh my gosh, so tired. Hi, this is Olive. So I've read from Leviticus 7 to 27, and I noticed as the Lord was talking about the different feasts that he expects his children to follow, that something came up that was really interesting. He talked about how there is an infection in the home. He gave Moses instruction for the methods of cleaning up the home. And when I read that, it reminded me of a time many years ago that I cleaned my home. Now, I'm not talking about the same type of cleaning where there's stuff all over the floor, or it's dusty or disorganized and you need to straighten up and organize and clean. That's not what I'm talking about. There's certain things in your home that the Lord considers unclean. And one may say, you know what, I worship God, so everything in my house is holy because I worship God. But the thing is, unfortunately, we live in a world where many people serve other gods. And those people are also artisans. And these artisans create all types of goods that they sell in the marketplace. And as they sell them, unfortunately, they are dedicated to their own gods and there is a spirit or energy within that item that carries their religion or their sentiment and if you're familiar with these things and if that's your faith or if that's your religion then those things shouldn't bother you but when you're a different religion and your religion says not to serve other gods nor bring any unclean or unholy item in the house we have to be very careful about the origin of the things we purchase and what could be lurking inside of them i had two sources that helped me do this and one was a video a dvd from perry stone and he talks about purging your home and he mentions specific items that are unclean to bring in your house and if you bring those things in your house there will be a curse inside of it one may say again you know i serve the lord so there jesus took away all curses yes that's true he redeemed us from the curse of the law but there are items that inherently have curses in them. And this is why you can see throughout the Old Testament, the Lord would at times tell his children not to bring certain things in their camp because it's cursed. It's not of the Lord. It's not holy. And that's why he asked them to set themselves apart and to have only items that he would approve because his spirit is in them or they're neutral. They don't have any type of demonic entity attached to them. So I thought that this reading this, these chapters would remind us to carefully inspect what's inside of our homes. And if there's anything questionable, we should pray about it and ask the Lord. Sometimes we want to go further in life or we want a promotion and we feel there's an obstacle or a delay or some sort of um, challenge. And sometimes those challenges are because we have something accursed in our home. And if you don't believe me, if you think I'm making this up, you can read the story about Joshua and Achan. And this is in the book of Joshua when the Lord gave Joshua instructions not to bring anything from the camps that they warred against inside the camp unless he told them they could have it. And in this specific situation, one of the children of Israel, one of the members of their camp, took something that was accursed and hid it inside of his own tent. And because of that, because of the disobedience, maybe not necessarily of the cursed thing itself, but the disobedience of this person willing to do this, 
they were defeated in the battle that God told them that they would have victory in. And Joshua was very upset because unbeknownst to him, he had no idea this man had taken this item. And so he's complaining to the Lord, you know, you brought us out and you took us to this land and told us it was our promised land and that we would defeat our enemies. And here we are losing the battle before them. And God was telling him to get up off his face and stop seeking him in that manner and to go find out who took what. And so I really think if you're unfamiliar with the story, you should read it. It's very insightful and it will give you a clue and an idea of how serious God is, not only about following his instructions, but bringing certain things inside your home. You have no idea. Uh, a friend of mine, Anja, and I were talking about this just today. You have no idea what prayers that they prayed over that item, what God they submitted them to, and what curses or spells that are inherent in that thing. So I say these things not to bring any type of fear, but to make you aware of everything you purchase just because it looks cool or it's a artifact or maybe um, souvenir from a certain country. You should do some research on the gods that that country is known to serve and what those artisans may be um, submitting to those gods with their craft. So I really hope that you take heed to this message and clean your house and you will see God will bless you and he will allow things to move forward and flow smoothly and easily and effortlessly for you when you do these things. And I chapters and verses were added to the scripture. They weren't originally written like that. They were written as whole books, books written by the author, either to the whole congregation of, of the Israelites or to a specific person or just a record a record that this person kept about things that happened to the Hebrews. And even before I knew this, this is how I was, but knowing that even fueled my philosophy of this. Um, there are many Christians that can tell you chapter and verse and book and author and custom and history of, of everything <laughs> in the word. They can quote things like, amazingly like as if they should be on some sort of game show for biblical scripture but it has been very difficult to learn chapter and verse of anything what i can tell you is uh it's probable author and what book you can find it in and some a bit of the historical text and so when i discovered that that chapter and verse were added for our benefit and ease to read, but weren't originally written like that. It showed me that sometimes we can quote a verse very well and we can tell you exactly where it is, but we just focus on that verse and we don't really focus on its background, the premise, the context surrounding it. And if we were to focus on the book as a whole, to understand the content or context as a whole and um, not pick little verses, that will help us interpret better. It will help us understand, you know, when people quote a verse, they say certain things and then they stop there. And it, it's kind of limiting because you're not adding the whole um environment of that verse but when you look at the book as a whole you can get the whole environment and understand it in that context so i would suggest to you to start as you are reading and going through this biblical challenge to start looking at these books as a whole and not just oh i'm reading chapter four or i'm reading chapter six or this verse says that of course god is going to allow certain verses to pop out at us and to speak through us through certain things. But if we get in the habit of looking at these things as a whole complete entity, 
a complete book written in a certain time period by a certain author that had a certain message. I think our interpretation and our understanding of that, as well as the scripture that, uh, that God points out to us, will go a little bit deeper. So I hope that helped you. And as you can see, for the balls challenge, I let them out. <laughs>